Joe Biden back on the campaign trail in Delaware and finally taking questions from the press. It comes as President Trump looks to be closing the polling gap. A new national poll finds the Democratic nominee's lead narrowing by about five points since June. Now, keep in mind, Biden still maintains his lead. And a separate poll shows Biden comfortably ahead. Earlier, the former vice president defended his campaign strategy. He took some shots at President Trump. Take a look. I think uh, my message is getting out based on what the, all the polling data shows and the millions of people who've watched what I've had to say and the circumstance in which I've said it. Um, but uh, I would like to get out more. I've begun to prepare by, uh, by uh, going over what the president has said and the multiple lies he's, <laughs> he's told. What I'd love to have is a crawler at the bottom of the screen, a fact checker. President Trump, meanwhile, responding while he was holding a dueling campaign event in North Carolina. Next year is going to be one of the best economic years our country's ever had. And I say that with a caveat, because Biden, if he knows what he's doing, which I don't think, Biden wants to raise your taxes by three and four times. It's crazy. Dana, uh, let's talk politics. Uh, the national polling average right no, now has you. Biden up by about seven. I, that's why I came to you. Uh, Biden up by about seven percentage points after the conventions. No change, basically, in most of the battleground states. Not what true. do you make of all this? Well, I do think that there is um, changes in the battleground states and, and tightening. <laughs> But I don't think you just have to look at the polls to know that. I think you can look at Joe Biden's activity. Um, you know when a campaign is starting to change its tactics and strategy, um, that they have seen something in the polls that either makes them concerned or that they want to capitalize on. And in this case, I think it's concern. If you think about it, um, the Trump campaign has been on offense and forcing Joe Biden into doing a couple of things, right? He went to Pennsylvania to do that event. He took questions today. He's going to go to Kenosha tomorrow. So that is different than even just three weeks ago when they seemed very comfortable to try to do this campaign by Zoom. That's not going to work. Uh, Joe Biden taking questions today. I thought he did fine, right? I mean, it takes a while to shake out the cobwebs and start taking more questions. He should probably do a lot more of that before the debates. And, um, that will, pro that will probably see if he can keep the lead that he has, but it is going to tighten. Partisans always come home. The president is definitely putting his uh, front foot forward. I, I don't know. Is that like a boxing thing? Probably. Um, he is on offense. That's also a sports term, in case anybody <laughs> didn't know. Um, and he is uh, running away with the ball. I'll, I'll leave it there. <laughs> Nice. I think we got the message. So, Jesse, uh, <laughs> there are new ads out. I don't know if you've seen them, but Trump is sending a law and order message in his ads. Meanwhile, Biden is charging Trump with provoking violence and failing to condemn uh, right wing white supremacists. What do you make of it? Do you think the ads are going to move the needle? Uh, I do. Um, but just before we get into that one, this race is tightening lightning fast. And it began in mid-July when the president started holding his coronavirus briefings again, started focusing on law and order, reopening schools, and got some fresh blood in the campaign. Now, Biden looks really defensive. He's scrambling, following Trump to Kenosha after saying he wouldn't do that. And now he's rushing out a panicked $45 million ad buy to defend himself against these law and order attacks that have absolutely uh, evaporated his polling lead in the battleground states. Biden does not look comfortable talking about this. He wants to talk about the virus. He does not want to be talking about violence right now. He looks like he's shifting his message back and forth. For, first, he sponsored the violence, then he ignored it, then he blamed Trump for it. The problem is this. He botched his sister soldier moment. He either is unwilling or unable to stand up to the left-wing radical mob, and now he's losing suburban women, Hispanics, blacks, and business owners of all races because of Black Lives Matter and Antifa violence. The messaging from his campaign is totally illogical. If, if this is a riot, why did you call it peaceful all summer? If this was Trump rioters, why did you bail them out? 
if you care so much about black lives, why did you say nothing about 50 people shot just now in Chicago? And if Trump is fanning the flames of violence, then why is he urging Democratic mayors and governors to accept the National Guard to stop the violence? None of the things that Biden has said has made any sense. People see it, and now it's registering. All right, so Greg, uh, what we know about money in politics is that it's really important. Biden raised 364 million in August, breaking records. You know, his favorability is up right now in the polls. What do you make of the money? We don't know how much President Trump was able to raise. It is a lot of money, but first, I do want to congratulate Chris Wallace. Um, after declining mm -hmm. the offer to moderate the debates, uh, I wish their second choice <laughs> all the best. I think he's going to do really well, and if he wants to call, I have some tips for him. Um, I was told that Joe's handlers told him the gap was closing, and he got very depressed because that's where he gets his pajamas. Um, and we made a big deal yesterday about him answering 131 questions. What we left out is that 84 of them were, what happened to your pants? And the remaining 47 is, why are they on your head? Can I just point to a great tweet from Donald Trump today, and then I'll shut up? This tweet, uh, do we have it? This is a great tweet. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial just closed above 29,000. You were so lucky to have me as your president. Wink. With jo ha Joe Hyden, it would crash. And the alarming face. This is <laughs> an amazing tweet. It's got emojis. This, this is the, he's breaking new ground. And, he, and, he, and by the way, the natural, effortless way that he uses the emojis, <laughs> contrast that to the stiffness of Joe Biden when he tries to tweet. And you can tell it's done by some flack who doesn't know what day it is either. So I'm excited, as you can tell. I'll shut up. That's all right. I mean, we did, I hadn't seen that emoji. That's interesting. Hey, Emily, uh, you know, a lot of this is about attracting suburban voters, especially suburban women. So I looked at the numbers, and right now Biden has a strong lead, maintaining it by 57 to 37. Uh, and in the suburbs overall, not just among women, Biden is up 58, 35. So what can the president do to improve his standing with suburban women? Well, I think what's interesting is the timing and the surgeons and the trend of that lead. And really quickly, I just have to say that as Greg was talking, I envisioned this future college course of like presidential use of emojis and students <laughs> analyzing how that, that's all that's all used. Um, but I'll just say this, that to go back to the timing and the trend, that I think it's pretty clear that after the convention, Biden did not enjoy a bounce in the polls, and that's not atypical. But it seems also clear that Trump did. And I think that, sure, going into Labor Day, there's always tightening of the polls, but he enjoyed a solid performance at the RNC, and coupled with those law and order issues in those battleground states like Wisconsin and Minnesota that are uniquely suited for him, I think it will be extremely tight moving forward. And if he is able to pick off Minnesota, then the entire Democrats' electoral map will be thrown into chaos.